1887. That was the birth year of Srinivas Ramanujan. And that was also the year of birth of my Guru and my foster father, my great grand and guru, Malapat Narayana. So this year, 2012, is doubly sweet for me because it is the 125th year of both these people who have influenced my thinking and my way of life for such a long time. Now, what is the, the similarity and differences between these two people? I just sometimes I just think uh, both had a very simple life and both were devotees of the Devi, Sri Vidya. Ramanujan has actually expressed that all his knowledge, all his equations, all his mathematics had come due to the blessing of the Namakkal Paradevada who was coming to him in dream visions. So he acknowledged the Devi as the source of all his great knowledge. And Nalapat Narayana Menon was the Sri Vidya Upasaka. He had a prayer which he recited every morning pertaining to the Devi. It said, every day I get up Prada Samuthaya Tava Priyartham for your love, for you. Samsara Yatra Manuvartayami. I am doing this journey of life every day for you, for your sake. I devote everything to you. So he also had a feeling that everything that he has achieved is through the Devi. And Ramanuja had a very highly checkered career in his beginning. Now we consider him as the greatest son of India, thanks to a foreigner, hmm? Hardy. If Hardy had not recognized Ramanuja, the Indians would not have recognized him. That remains a fact. We have to accept that fact. And in the case of Narayan Menon, he never wrote in English. He always wrote only in Malayalam. So his scholarship was always restricted to a small land that is Kerala, the Malayalam speaking audience only. So, but during his lifetime itself, he had made a mark in this small area. But for the uh, Ramanujan's case, that fame came only after his death, it was posthumous. For Narayana Menon, the recognition came even when he was alive. So that difference is there. But my story is something very different from the comparison of these two people. It is about an astronomical synchronicity of these two people coming to my life in a in a very, very wonderful way. Now, uh, on December 26th, 2011, when I walked to the auditorium or of the uh, uh, Subaru Auditorium in Chennai, to hear the speech of Dr. Robert Kanigal, who has written the biography of Ramanuja with the title the man who knew infinity. That's a very good title, you know, the man who knew infinity. And so I was thinking about the astronomical synchronicity of my life with these two people, Ramanuja and Nalapat Narayana Menon, born in the same year and having the 125th year of birth, the same year, naturally. No, Kainigal started his speech with the experiences of his first day in Chennai when he came for his research and he told that he, the first person with whom he had an encounter, he acquainted with was a relative or a grandson of Narayana here who was instrumental 
for introducing Ramanuja's uh, skill to the outside world. In Chennai airport itself, he met that person. So is that mere coincidence? When we meet a person who is destined or who even without our knowledge, such a person comes into our life, that is an astronomical synchronicity or a psychological synchronicity in the words of Carl Jung. Now, it is not mere coincidence, but only very few people recognize this synchronicity. And what is my story related to these two people? Now, I, I have never heard of Srinivas Ramanujan in my life until very late in my life. Now, I, had, I am educated in the medical science, not a mathematician at all. And I saw the models of the magic squares of Ramanuja, but not as Ramanuja squares. In the old diaries of my grand uncle, Nalapad Narayana Menon, 19 of them are with me even now. If you can call them as notebooks of Narayana Menon, just like notebooks of Ramanuja. I saw these models of these squares, but they were not marked as Ramanuja squares. You know, my uh, uncle was very uh, an adept in the tantric law, tantric and mantra literature, uh, as well as Vedic literature. So he had written be beneath these yantra certain names. Uh, he had written the Panchadashi yantra of the Vishaloga tantra. Then, Navagraha Shanti Yantra of Shiva Rahasya. And I noticed that these two, that is the Navagraha Shanti Yantra of Shiva Rahasya and the Panjadashi Yantra of Vishaloga Tantra are the same. The same numbers are used and if you add these uh, numbers, you get, always get 15. That is why it is Panjadashi. And then I came to know, later on I came to, I understood that the Panjadashi Mantra and Panchadashi Yantra is that of Lopa Mudra, the consort of Sage Agastya, a very early Vedic Krishna of the Maitra Varuni Shagha of Veda. Now, this lady, this Lopa Mudra Sutra, as it is called in India, was transferred to China, and the first letters of Lopa Mudra, law. And Sutra, as Su, Lo Su, is the name that is given in China. And the Chinese legend says that these figures were drawn from the back of a tortoise, Kurma, by certain seafaring tribes. They don't know who they are. Certain sea, seafaring tribes had drawn this from the back of the of a tortoise or kurma and given it to them. So they are recognized that it has come from others, from where they have said. But for us, we know the kurma, the, on, the, on the kurma, that is, on the kurma yantra, we, all, we see the same panjadashi. You know? the, it is the, the vishwa is on the back of the kurma, as far as the kurma avatar, the Vishnu avatar. And that figure, is the Lopa Mudra Sutra and it is transferred to China as Los. Now, later on, really, if you call it a coincidence, I will call it an astronomical synchronicity. I just came to understand that the simplest or the most simple magical square of Ramanuja is this Panchadashi. The simplest one, with when I, when you add, you get the fifteen, like that, and the formula the, he uses is the same as that of the Panchadashi of Lopa Mudra Sutra. And do you think that this is mere coincidence? You just think that Ramanuja has said that all his knowledge has come from his Namakal Paradevada in dream visions, and this is the Tantra knowledge, the Sri Vidya knowledge of the Devi Panchadashi. So, don't you think that what he said is true? This is how I came to know about 
became manager and then i started to learn about his magic squares and his mathematical things and there is a mathematical play in india it is called nan chappad chappad means chaturanga the chess nan is wisdom the wisdom chess nan chappad but it is also known as leela the play the world is the play of the god so it is actually the chess play of the wis of the most wise the, the wisdom is residing in ratna wisdom in sides in god so the world is only a play of god that is the concept of this leela it is played by children and on this you find 72 small squares which are drawn just like the 72 melagartha raga in music and each square is actually a cube not a square but on a plain paper it has to be drawn as a square you have to conceive it but as a cube now in leela when we add these numbers from above below or from below above whichever way you always get the number 292 If you multiply this into by ten, you get two thousand nine hundred and twenty. Now, what is this two thousand nine hundred and twenty for Indian astronomers? It is eight revolutions of the Earth, as well as five revolutions of the Venus, two planets. So, in two thousand nine hundred and twenty years, if the Earth and Venus started their revolution from the same point they will come to the same point after 2920 years the exact position so that is what is the importance of that figure 2900 and 20 i have mentioned about these things in all my books right from the uh, 80s 90s onwards like patma sindhu and the varaha migrande pancha siddhantika an astronomical text then in the reading of my tobari cave inscriptions not these things i have mentioned the same thing so i don't want to repeat those technical parts here one thing that i want to tell you is that in the mayan calendar you know 2012 is a very important year in mayan calendar all of you know that now in the mayan calendar the multiplication table of 91 into 19 is given and 19 into 91 is 1729 and according to the nobel prize winner great astrophysicist uh, richard feynman no one has ever described or found out or deciphered the reason for such a multiplication table in the mayan calendar why should they start from 19 into uh, 91 that is figure 1729 then then downwards up to 19 into 1 19 as the smallest unit if i have the audacity to say that i have deciphered it it will be a, 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 a major folly on my part but it is not that i have deciphered it with knowledge but it just came to me like that now the reason what the reason is you know calendar means calculation of time you know time space calculation comes in the calendar yes now what is 1729 in the indian calendar that is what that so that knowledge only gave me that insight not the mathematical part 1728 is the satya yuga period you can add any number of zeros to that 1728 plus 1 is the figure which is given in mayan calendar so the relationship between the indian calendar and the mayan calendar is one thing that i noticed then the figure 19 19 is the varga mula of kala that is square root of time in india because 19 into 19 is 361 which is the most nearest to the 360 degree of circles so 19 it is that is why that 19 is used and 91 is used because 1729 is the nearest to the satyayuga 
Here it is 360 plus 1, 19 into 9 degree get. There it is 1728 plus 1. There is a plus 1 in both. So the relationship of this Indian and Mayan calendar is what I found out. So though Feynman or any other astrophysicist has not deciphered it, a person who is not at all uh, used to the math, great mathematics or I am not at all a mathematics genius at all, but I could decipher that because of my knowledge with the different systems of knowledge of the world. That is what I wanted to uh, stress. So, and you know, what is the relation of this number with Ramanujan? That is what surprised me because you know that the Hardy's taxi number was 1729. And when Hardy said that it was a very uh, boring number of the taxi car, Ramanujan said, no, it is not. It's a very interesting, very important number. And he said, it is the smallest number as the sum of two Trivarga, which can be expressed in two ways. That is our Satya Yuga Sankhya plus one. So, Ramanujan, who was very much an adept in Indian Vedic mathematics and Indian way of time calculations, could decipher it easy. It is not, a, it's a, actually, it is a God given gift. It has nothing to do with the degrees or postgraduate degrees. Ramanujan never had any postgraduate degree in mathematics, just like us, a common person. But he had that knowledge of mathematics. So this is something which the modern generations are forgetting. When somebody who is not having a special degree in one subject speaks about the truth of that subject, people just say that, ah, that is something mythical. No. If you say things like that, a great person like Ramanujan or a great person like Kalapat Narayana Menon will never be recognized by posterity. So don't mistake that degrees are the measuring rods for knowledge or wisdom. And another thing that I wanted to stress is that when somebody is speaking about the Satya Yuga, the Kalpa Yuga, etc., somebody is not speaking about the astrology, somebody is not speaking about the personal life of a 120 year lifespan. People are thinking about infinity then. Only those people who think about time spans of Yuga and Kalpa can touch infinity. So the man who knows infinity means the man who touches infinity, the, the time space of infinite uh, dimensions. You have to know this, not the usual simple uh, things that, of the mundane life alone. And when I mentioned this thing at the interactive session of Robert Carnegie, the reply he gave surprised me. He told me that I am not dealing with astrology, I am an astronomer. This surprised me. Because if a person who is not used to astronomy or not used to the, the modern concept of the, the astronomical time and the timelessness, that is infinity. No? Such a person thinks that a Satya Yuga calculation or Yuga calculation, Kalpa calculation is related to a small personal life of 120 years. It is not the biography of a one person. It is the biography of the entire human race that we are talking about when we talk about infinity, when we talk about Satya Yuga. But a person who has given the title of the man who touches touch infinity could not could not realize this fact. That surprised me a lot. Uh, because, you know, I'm only a, 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 a commoner. But even with my common sense, I can touch that infinity with this wisdom. That, that is what knowledge is all about. Okay. Now, yoga, the Yuga and Kalpa are 
times that cyclically go around and touches infinity always. It recurs, but it always is infinite. That 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 recurrence is infinite. To touch to touch the realm of one's consciousness, who has touched infinity, one has to get out of all the closed definitions of modern science, I must say. To touch infinity, to touch the consciousness of a person who has touched infinity, you have to get out of the shackles or the closed definitions of everything, including science. And human mind is at present in need of such a transformation, such a freeing from the closed view of the modern science. The India government and the mathematical departments of India and the world over is celebrating the birth uh, of Ramanujan, the 125th year of Ramanujan this entire year. But who remembers that, the, that Ramanuja got all his knowledge from his Namakal Paradeva, that dream vision. If that dream vision is myth and his notebooks and his equations are uh, science, can you think that the cause is a myth and the effect is science? If the effect is science, the cause has to be science as well. And the, he has also already said that if there is no God, in the equations. I have no meaning for my equations. He had said that also. So I just wanted in this year, the 125th year of Ramanujan as well as my guru, Malapat Narayana Menon, I want to give this message to the modern world of science that don't think that everything is mythological just by the definitions of modern science. There are certain other things that you have to analyze before you make such a decision.